Okay, there we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in a Rainy ATL Day, <laughs> which might be better for my lighting situation. So I, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do. I think we might just play pull out a prompt jar and draw some things or I don't know. I have my big, uh, you know, scrolls here where we played in these with just prompts. If y'all have been around for these, this is just one of the ones where we just kind of like brainstormed ideas, drew a little bit, played with some ink, um, <clears throat> Played with some uh, stamping with the foam. Made our own stamp with the fun, not fun foam, but those foam blocks. Let's see what else. One of the prompts was draw a selfie. Uh, do some little ladybugs. This was one of Jean's lists that we started. I blame Jean for all that. I blame Jean for everything. <laughs> Uh, these were some little quick little, I think I did these with thumb prints and then made little faces out of them. We did some wax crayon, so you're seeing that. So this is melted crayon. And just some little, drew a little folded paper. So this is just a little bit of everything in here. And so this one's getting pretty full, so I have another half roll here. So if we do some prompts, I'll just start that one. Uh but I've had some questions on the magazine journal, so hopefully the lighting is okay. It's okay, I guess. Uh, on the magazine journals that I talked about the other day, if y'all have any questions, put them in yeah, yeah, prompts, prompts, prompts. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps so that um, I can catch those. <clears throat> But anyway, so these were some of the magazine journals. I just pulled three of them here. This is the one I sort of showed a little bit the other day. And all it is, so let me just kind of explain. You, you can get, it, it doesn't have to be two magazines. I've glued two together. And you can see, I'll tell you the trick about not having this happen. Um, but you can glue two magazines together. I like the Somerset uh, or the, the Somerset Studio Publication people. Stampington. They have like 20 different magazines. You know, they have stamping ones, art journaling, Somerset Studio, bloggers, home and home ones, and handbags, and they have like all kinds. And so I just have two, I picked two that I had had around and that I didn't need or want anymore, and I glued two together. The the back the, the back cover of one to the front cover of the other. And I've done that with multiple magazine things. So this is a pretty new one here. And, and that's all it is. It's two magazines of your, like if you like to, if you're a gardener, you might pick two gardening magazines, flower magazines, fashion magazines. Although the fashion magazines are very, very thin. Um, you can still do this, but it's gonna, it's your pages will probably really wrinkle because it is very thin. It's the other magazines that have, and they're not like it's not like extra quality paper or anything, but it's better than just the fashion magazines, which usually tend to have the cheapest, thinnest uh, pages, which is great if you're doing collage. You know, those thin pages are great to collage. But um, what, what I'm, gonna, I'm doing with these is like painting and, and, you know, you can even journal in them if you want with like a big pen over the acrylic paint. So what it is, you just glue two together of any kind of choice of magazine as you like. And what you do is, let me find a good sample one, is you paint around, maybe this one, you paint around the images that are on there with colors that either coordinate or match the colors in the images. And what that does is it gives you a full cohesive page to journal on or even work on more collage or whatever else you want to do further. But it gives you, it, it makes you start to think about color combinations and color trying to match the colors that are in the images just to kind of color play, basically. 
that's what I I like these for. And I I haven't worked in them in uh, for quite a while, probably at least a year, because I've just been doing other you know other art projects. But I have had requests for showing these a little bit and explaining them. Now, because every page will end up being painted. I did pull something out here, or maybe just came loose. Every page is pretty much painted. So when you do that, oh, I see what it is. I had this torn out for something, and then I taped it back in. I don't know. Bob, don't ask why I deconstructed this one. But what I wanted to say is if you work in one of these where you're painting every single page, you need to work some in the front, some in the back, some in the front, some in the back, so that your spine does not warp. This one, I really kind of just went front to back, and you can see what happens to the spine. It will warp like that, and you really never can get it back, no matter how much you smash it down and put books on top of it. It's really not ever going to get back. Not that that matters to me so much, because it's just a play-in. But if, if that kind of thing bothers you, you need to do some paint in the front and some in the back so that it kind of gets wet at the same rate, front and back, and then you won't get that warped spine. This one, it did it a little bit on this one. You can see there. But if you don't want that, again, now this one is just kind of pretty new. This one has three magazines in it, so this one will end up probably being about that thick in the end because they puff up. The pages are going to puff up. And so those three magazines will probably double. And so it'll be real puffy, which I, I like that. I don't mind that. But if you don't want the spine to warp, work some in the front, some in the back. Some Now, you know, that's just to paint the pages. If you've got your pages painted and then you want to actually use it for a journal or sketching in or something like that, it doesn't matter about, you know, you can start from the front and work your way to the back. But the initial painting of the pages, you really need to go front, back, front, back for them not to, that to happen. So just want to explain that real quick. So some of these are kind of personal, so I won't show every one. Um, but I'll kind of show, I did a table of contents there. Let's see. So, okay, so here's a good example. And you can use other things too. I use a little bit of washi tape and I didn't like, I just stuck this page in here because I like this calendar bit. Kind of went along with this. That was after the fact. That was after I painted all this in. If y'all have any questions, just ask because I'm not sure, you know, what, what to, I try to cover everything, but I might miss something that somebody's thinking, well, what about so-and-so or what a, yeah, I like puffy books too, Rain. All right, so what it is, is that you just, um, you paint around the images. I'll probably try to find one here and give you an example. And you can paint it, scrape it, blend it. You know, I love blending everything with collage um, in my collage cards, my art journaling and all that. So let's just kind of see here. So this is glued on separately. I stamped there. I did that so you can this is kind of like beyond just the painting part I started putting some things on top so you can kind of see trying to keep the glare off I did all this brickwork um, so you can just kind of see like this image this drawers that drawer was there this little mannequin bit was there. These spools were there. And then I painted that. I added stamping. I added some collage stuff. Stamping, collage, you know. So it can be multiple things. If you like this, it's fun too. I'm just, you know, I got a few kind of personal pages that I'm just kind of like, you know, skipping over. Okay, here's another one. These these were here. These plants were here, and I just you see all the paint. You can see all the painted parts. The word creating was already there. These are the you know art uh, you know Somerset. I don't know which one it was. It's not Somerset Studio because I don't I don't glue those. It could have been the blog one. It could have been I don't remember you know because I painted it all over. But hey Paula. You made one four inches. Th oh, no, I haven't made one four inches thick. 
Yeah, Joycey, Joycey uses magazines for her journaling, but she does it different. She makes her own paper. Um, I don't know how she does all that, but she uh, th these are just painted. This is just paint. It's not like Joycey's very, um, she adds a lot more stuff. <laughs> if I'm going to add a lot of stuff in a journal, I usually end up doing that in a, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, uh, you know, dilutions. So you can see this one I kind of started doing a, it had a heart on there. So I kind of started doing like a Valentine theme with pink and yellow. Um, this one has like yellow and, and like aqua. And then I did some stamping on there. Her own paper. Her own paper, uh, uh, Orla. If you not watch Joycey, she can she she turns magazine pages into her own paper to make uh, use. You have to ask her how she. There's tons of ways she does it, but she will take magazine pages or like flyers, like you get or uh, junk mail or anything like that, and she'll turn she'll doodle on it. She'll put. Um, with a stencil, she'll doodle on it and turns it into a, her own, like, her own pattern paper, if you will. She turns it into her own pattern paper. Okay, so here we go with this. So you can just kind of see some of the things that I've painted out. This one came out, again, I think I was pulling this out for some purpose. But I did I didn't use it so yeah or newspaper yeah or she'll start with newspaper I don't do all that on mine mine's just pretty much paint and collage <clears throat> maybe she'll show y'all today ask her this one I think came loose and I taped it in see it doesn't matter to me if it comes loose I just tape it or if I've had to pull it out for something. So you can see these are the images there. And then I just paint around them. Hey, Morgan. Yeah, and then she uses the paper. Let me see, I have one of hers. Then she'll use the paper. She uses the paper, like here's this little jar she made. I keep my rubber bands in one of these little, uh, you know, Pringle jars. So this is one of the papers. I don't know what it started as, but she uh, stenciled on it and then covered this can. Again, that's all I see. I don't know what else the full sheet was. So, but this is taking full magazines and turning them into journals. Glued one of those uh, acetate things in there. So you can kind of see. I'm just going to flip through a few pages and I'll do one or something so you can see how I do it. Hey, Eileen. Good to see you. Uh, well, it took me 45 minutes to get uh, on, <laughs> on Ustream this morning. And so first off, I'm just showing some of the, because I had uh, people ask about the magazine journals that I kind of briefly just talked about on Monday. So I thought I'd just kind of show them and talk about a little bit. So again, painted and I just drew some little eyes on there. It's just whatever. It's whatever you want to do with it. Here's one. These these tags were already on there. So I painted around it and then I distressed inked the edges because there was some wood looking thing there. So I distressed all the edges to make it like, let me put something under this one to prop it up so there's not a glare. There we go. So it's just, you know, taking a magazine and making it your own. Painting out all the text, basically. You're, you're um, painting out all the text. And like that's already there. That was like a title of the article. Did 
you have any questions, just ask. But you can then use this for other things. And pretty much the only thing that really works well, other than like a dip nib pen, you know, with liquid ink, is a Bic pen. Paula told, showed us that trick. A Bic pen will go over acrylic paint, you know, the a plain old crystal Bic pen, whereas a Sharpie will just um, almost immediately dry out or it just like sucks up the, I don't know, it just ruins a Sharpie. So, so you can just kind of see, I just paint around everything. And then leave it kind of messy in this case. You don't have to leave it messy. You could paint it really nice. Then I added a piece of collage right there on top of the spool. Big pen. Yeah, a big pen. You know, here. I find one here. I got one in my, uh, I got a bunch of them, but I just got to find where they are. Uh, where did I put them all? Hang on, guys. And they come in colors too. Big pens. These. Plain old Bic. <laughs> yeah. And I got them in all different sizes thanks to Paula the Enabler. Oh, these are Ink Joys. Okay, these are the... I just grabbed them just out of the bag to show you. They come in colors. And uh, they come in more colors than these. I've given some away. Like the pink one I gave to Mom. But they come in different sizes. But that's, you know, these. These are big pens. This was one of the Somerset Studio publications, the Stampington publications, Eileen, but I don't know which one. I guess if I really looked hard, I could probably <laughs> find some place where, it, you know, I haven't painted over it. But I have like six of them and two magazines in each one. And this one, I have three magazines. <clears throat> but that's a new one. I haven't really done anything in yet. <laughs> you don't know what a big pen okay maybe somebody didn't know i don't know if other countries may not know what big pens are i think they're called crystals too so you can just see different things like this now that was painted in some of it some of it's hard to tell if it's collage or painted in because i do both you know i do both this one is just flat blue, hasn't even got any distressing on it. But let me just, well, um, let me bookmark this one and I'll go back in and distress this one. I'll distress that one. And here's one I just completely painted out. Okay, now these are the covers. These are the stiff covers to the second magazine. So here goes into the next one. And you can see, like the translucent yellow didn't really cover all the text. So that probably needs to be like more distressed. So let's just see. I think then the, I have the back half. I started doing some front to back so that the spine would be uh, flat. But you, you get the idea, I think. I think you get the idea. So you can see how I've distressed it, some of it with inks and my dar inks as i call them the scented ones those work well or just any kind of the distress inks you know rub them on there to make it distress i'll do that blue page here in a minute just so you can kind of see they're all different everyone is different you you know because you're just going around you're basing your colors on the images that one's kind of cool. And again, if I like this and want to do something with it, I would just tear this out. It doesn't bother me to deconstruct things, use journal pages or sketchbooks or anything and tear it out and use it in something else. <laughs> but all this background is, is what I've done to the page. So it started with just text. There's like text under each one of these pictures. So you can kind of see, I'm just kind of doing it quick here. Just then, here's one that's nothing done. 
Uh, let's see. Then it's kind of, I think I went then to the middle. So I was trying to keep the spine a little better. Um, so, yeah. All right, let me go to that blue page here. We'll do something with this one real quick. Yeah, that's what, hey, Colleen. Yeah, that's what they are. How's your foot, Colleen? Are you still hobbling? I mean, I'm sure you will be for a few weeks. But uh, one of the girls had surgery on her foot. Yeah, and the and the Somerset, these are Somerset, well, Stampington, I think, is the publisher. Somerset Studio is one of their publications. But all their magazines have a little bit thicker paper. Uh, again, you could do this with fashion magazines, but they're going to really wrinkle really bad. Now, I guess you could glue two together. I never glue any pages together in any books. Not my composition books, not my magazine uh, journals, none of them. And I don't gesso anything either. If I want something just covering up the background, I just use acrylic paint. That's all these are. There's no gesso. Although you could put just white acrylic paint to start. Like that yellow page did not cover the text. You know, you could either gesso or just put white acrylic paint on it before you put the... But that's a lot of work. These magazines are a lot of work and a lot of time. Because you're talking about <laughs> hundreds of pages. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. Like, maybe I'll use a little bit of cream. I don't know if I want to use too much red, even though there's some red in here. I think I'm going to go with cream, maybe a little red accent in it. Hopefully, it's bright enough in here, guys, because it's really rainy out. Is, is it too bright? Or, no, I mean, is it bright enough? Because I can brighten it some. There we go. It just depends if my hands are in there or not. <laughs> Okay, let me get a let me get a couple of colors here. I think we'll go with uh, let's just go with a kind of a cream color, maybe a tan and a cream, or maybe let's see, moon yellow. Let's go with that because it's kind of in that straw color. So basic. Oh, I'm trying not to say that. So <laughs> what I usually try to do is match up one or two of the color three of the colors that are in whatever so in this case i just i did the background all blue because of the little blue robin egg it's probably hard to see on camera well you can see it right there a little bit you can see the blue right there so that's what i started with the background and i said i think i'll do a little bit of red just a little primary red maybe a touch of a brown. Let's see. In this brown, do I want dark brown or do I want like a lighter? I think I'll go with the lighter brown. And so this is just how I usually just distress the pages. All right, let me get a baby wipe. And a palette knife. So this is usually what I start with. Now again, it's I've already base coated the whole background a, a one color. And that's usually what I start with. It's just you know one solid color that I pick out. Um, okay, thanks guys. And then I'll just start. I'll just pick up some paint and I'll just start scraping it. If it gets too thick or too much, then I'll go in there with a the baby wipe. So I'm just going to put some of the cream. A little bit of the brown here and there, maybe right there, and just a touch of red here and there, like that. And I might start with that, or I might start with just one. But then I can just kind of go in here and kind of blend out, blend in the images. So I'm kind of making the images like go into the background. Might not have needed that much red. And I can still wipe it away, you know, while it's kind of wet. So I'm just kind of doing a side stroke here. <laughs> so just get the images kind of blended in. See how they kind of just blend right in? But if you get too much paint while it's still wet, you know, just, you know, kind of pull, pull some of it off there. Maybe too much red. Or if I just think there's just too much paint, you know, I can pull some off. But this is, this is how I just get the pages started. And then I can play with the, 
you know, blending it out or too much or too little, something like that. But it, what it ba what it does is it blends in the background images. I mean, it blends the images into the background. I could, you know, go this way if I want to make it even more distressed. Let's just do a little bit more distressing here. I'm barely touching the page with the palette knife just to kind of scrape on some paint here. You just got to kind of play. You don't, don't worry about what you do with it. Like that. Okay. So if that's too much, you'd wipe it back while it's wet. Because there's no, no, uh, I don't have any matte medium or anything on this. So it's, you know, it's not protected from, you have, it will, as soon as it dries, you can't get it back off is what I'm saying. All right, so now I'm going to dry this, and then I'm going to take uh, some ink pads to it, so you can see even more like distressing. Ink gun. Uh oh, it's not plugged in. <laughs> but it'll take you weeks to do one of these. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you just constantly worked on it day in and day out, but if you just want to, you know, play with some colors and some paint, which that's my purpose of these, then, you know, it just depends on how often you work in it. But it gives you a base to then go on to do other things. You don't even have to really necessarily keep 100% of the image. Like that and then let me get a couple of uh, bring some ink pads over here to the side so I'll just bring a tray I got some ink an ink tray let's see what I want to do maybe some maybe some pink I think it's strawberry these are some of the ink pads Dara's still here no, I don't think yeah she's still here she gave me all the set of the Ranger scented um, ink pads and I've used and used them so I can't even promise you that this is going to work they might be totally w worn out but now what I'll do is I'll cut there we go I'll just kind of go over it see that maybe around the edges I'm barely touching but it will give me some more distressing and this can be you can do this with any of your distressy inky pads you know but there you go I see a face there. <laughs> Sunglasses. Do another one, and you can also do brown. You know, put more brown on there. You could splatter, like like uh, with some dark brown or black. Let's just go with black because it's just handy here. Get a little black paint. My water. Water down some. brush water down and do some splattering I mean these are all just the same 
your same usual um, mixed media techniques. Okay, let me dry that. Takes a minute to dry splatters because they're a little thicker. You know. And I don't care if they kind of, you know, let's just smash them together. <laughs> Help them dry a little quicker. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. That's just, you know, then you can do whatever you want on top. You can go on to make it into an art journal. So there you go. And don't think there's any questions because it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> All right. So you can see just different. This one I would use blue ink around it. Let's add a little brown ink just so you can kind of see. Let's see. Some form of brown ink. One of these. Showing up a little, a bit more. You want to start one too? Thanks. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fun to do them. Here's one with some purple. It's just any color. You can start with any color as your ba base. The background. All right. So let me go into another one. Let me move this over here. Again, I'll tell you the magazines that I used in this one because this is new. So let's see what magazine. Okay, was this? No, that was just an ad for art quilting. What one was this one? I think this one. This one, I think, was a Somerset Life. Or it was one of those uh, studio gallery. That's what it is. Here, here it is right here. Gallery. Where it was like a, year's, a, lo a year long. Um, encapsulation if you will of, of a whole bunch of Somerset Studio publications all in one and so you can see I haven't done anything in this one yet it's one that I haven't done and in the back one what's this one probably the same thing yeah it's another gallery so it's just two and here's where I glued them together okay so it's a real stiff page in the middle so that is just one that hasn't had anything done in it yet. Yeah, I like, and then again, like, like you were just saying, some of them look old and medieval. Well, then you can add your own collage elements. And then you can also, if you are a journaler that likes to journal in your art journals, then you just use a big pen because that will go over acrylic. I'm not one to journal much. I've done a few in here just for samples and things, but I'm not really a, a journaler. Or, um, I don't uh, write, write out my journaling in an art journal. I do that in other books, like I talked about on Monday. Um, yeah, there you go, too. And I might have even added one of the Somerset Digital ones in. I don't know, Eileen. I don't remember. There were magazines I was done with. I was going to throw away. So, and I, of course, I don't. I could not possibly keep them all. Uh, but I tried to keep a few, you know, glue a few together to end up like this. All right, let's, let's write on this. Let's just say, um, with the big pen, let me make sure it's working. I didn't want to get an empty one. You probably won't be able to see it. But Paula got us started 
I'm going to write kind of big. I don't write, <laughs> that's another thing, I don't write big. Paula got us started. Maybe I should get one of the, the big, thick ones. Let me get the thicker one. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to go back over this. Paula got us started using Crystal Bix over acrylic paint. See, it writes perfectly fine over it. <laughs> and it's just smooth as glass. So, yeah, that's what these work well. And this is the 1.6, which, oh, it's T, did I spell it wrong? Yeah, there's no Y. I think they put it I. They spell it C-R-I-S-T-A-L. But they're Bic. Bic is the brand. And I mean, we we grew up with these were the kind of pens we used in school that I, me and Eileen used. <laughs> these are the kind of pens me and I. No, wait, Eileen probably used fountain pens. <laughs> uh, uh, these are expensive. These are expensive where you are, Paula. I mean, I'm yeah. I must have missed something. Something's more expensive. It's not these. These aren't expensive. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Eileen ran out of the room. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hey, Robin. Uh, <laughs> so there's a lag in chat. So I have to wait for. I have to wait for the jokes that I tell to get a laugh, like thirty seconds. It's kind of like ruins the punchline when you tell a joke and you know you're not going to get a laugh for at least thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're cheap there too. Okay. But anyway, so Paula was the one that told you, because I, like I said, I'm not much to write over acrylic paint. I, if I journal, literally journal, writing journal, it's going to be in a journal, in a, for like a moly, okay? Or now it's my uh, adorables. But <laughs> she's the one that, has, you know, told us that these, this, these uh, Bix crystals will write over acrylic without any problem. Oh, the Somerset magazines. Yeah, they are expensive. They're like 15 bucks. And I got to say, well, I'm not going to diss on them. I'm not going to diss on them. Uh, I, I've have, I have their collection for their first, since 1995 or 6 when they first came out. 4, 94. Anyway, I have, I have years and years of the collection. But for me, they're all starting to be, the, they all start to look the same. So I just kind of quit buying them. I, I mean, they're great if you've never bought any of the Somerset Studio magazines or the Art Journal magazines. They're awesome. You know, but for me, they all just started looking the same. So I started gluing them together and painting over them. Now, <laughs> just an idea to use with, with when they're, you're done with them. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be these mag. It can be any, it doesn't have to be art magazines is what I'm saying. They can be the Home and Garden um, you know, gardening magazines, cooking magazines. You can just t turn, you know, any type of magazine that have images that you like. If you're a gardener, you're going to like gardening magazines. Uh, you might like, um, you know, cooking magazines, you flower magazines, just all about flowers or any, you know, any topic. And I'm just, those are just randomly coming to my head. <laughs> They are, right, Eileen? Anyway, but they are awesome, especially for, you know, image, you know, like this. And it's just, you know, just to make your own little art journal thing with. But the, but those do write over everything, like Paula said. They do write over everything. Okay, what was I going to do next? Oh, another page. Okay. Oh, I was going to show you the other book. Okay, so the other book that I have, you know, pretty much a lot done in. Is, and again, I glue the pages together, the front and back covers together, <clears throat> and so th in this case, I duct taped it just to give it extra strength, and again, I wasn't careful about going front to back, front and back, front and back. If you don't want this to happen, you have to go front and back on your uh, initial pages, on your initial uh, painting of the pages, so that that doesn't warp, because the wetness of the paint is warping it. 
So if you just go straight from front to back like that, it's going to work. But I put duct tape on this one. This one has clear packing tape. And this is just some scrapbook paper that's already, that already had like a coating on it. You know, it already has like a gloss finish to this scrapbook paper. And then I just uh, added some washi tape and then a, a coat, put a uh, packing tape, clear packing tape over it for this spine. This spine just has clear packing tape and this one has duct tape. So it just kind of gives it more, more, oh, holds it together better. So... Yeah, Paula did a small, I, I don't know if you're starting with this, talking about the same one. Paula did a small fashion UK. It was six by eight, she said. It was a small one. And she's had that one for a long time too. How long? I mean, well, forever. But she art journaled in a small fashion magazine. But I don't remember how thick the pages were, Paula. Were they thin, like American um fashion magazines because american fashion magazines are really cheap you can get a nice big thick vogue or you know something like that for like 5.99 but the paper is like you know wafer thin you know so yeah any any magazines i just glue two together Avon catalogs. Yeah, and like I said, Joycey has done all kinds of, I don't know if she, what makes like books, she she more makes things out of the paper, um, like, like an Avon catalog or a flyer or a newspaper, and she paints them and makes her own paper. Yeah, <laughs> Eileen. Eileen's her AARP magazine. <laughs> there you go, Eileen. You're so funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see what I got in here. This, some of these I have. Um, all right, like this page right here. That was already on there. The lively art of lettering that was in this magazine. But you can see this one I've stenciled, splattered, and painted. So you don't have to stop with um you don't have to stop with just the painting here's a stencil here that's a stencil here this is a, a this is a napkin this is a uh, decorative napkin so you can do that you can turn it into a real like your regular art journal Yeah, Jean didn't, did she even stream on Monday or she said she was going to be, I didn't make it on her this last Monday. Um, I didn't know that she was actually using a, a journal, magazine journal for her nano journal. Is that how you say it? When you have more than one magazine, do you have to go front and back for each magazine, the whole bunch? Yeah, yeah, like from front here to back here. Then here, and then here, Rain. Yeah, back and forth. Because this is what happens. It warps the spine. If you just go front to back. See, when I got to that second magazine, it started warping. <clears throat> it doesn't bother me, because it's a junky journal anyway. And puffy, and wrinkly, and I don't care about that so much. But some people, that would bother. And so I just want to, like, clarify that. Um, yeah, and that's another thing, too, Linda. Linda was talking about, like, stamp magazines or catalogs. That would be excellent. I haven't done one of those. Let's see if I can put my hands on one, on my old ones. Let's see. Oh, let's see where I put them. I don't know where I, when I cleaned everything up, I might have taken those downstairs with all my scrapbook stuff. But yeah, old um, old stamp, you know, where they show the images. That would be a fun one to play with. All right, let's see what else. 
and that's one that's not done. So some of them are just like, you know, started like this. This one's stenciled. This one's more distressed. Again, it's all the same thing as just like what I just showed you. Smear and paint. Palette knife. Inking. Yeah, the leopard page, that was a napkin. You know, your decorative napkins. You'll know what I mean. You know what I mean, Vern. Let me grab, you know, like this one here. You know, your decorative napkins like this. Just peel them apart and use them like you would a paper. And who was it that showed the tip for using tape? Somebody showed the tip for using tape to pull apart the napkins. So like that. Isn't that awesome. Just the tape pulls the napkin. Now, I don't know if this one, I think this might have another layer. Let's see if it's got another layer. This one might not have two layers. I can't tell. Yeah, there it goes. See? The tape just pulls the layer right off. I forget who told me or where I saw that. Jean. Okay, it was Jean. Okay, I didn't remember where I saw it. Yeah. So, like this. You know, then you can use bits of it or parts of it or the corners of it. And add this to your journal. I like to tear better, more than cut because then when you put the paint over it, it blends better. But... And I don't really want it on this page. We'll see if we can find a page where that would be cool looking, you know. Always listen to Jean. <laughs> I did, I only saw, I gotta say, Paul, on your show last Saturday, I only watched a few minutes of the front and I had to speed through it because I didn't have time that day to watch the whole thing. But I didn't want to miss it. I wanted to see the finished thing. So I didn't see the uh, whatever it is you listen to Jean about on, on your show. Um, this one had book arts on it. I try to, you know, I, I, you know how many streams we all try to keep up with. Catalog. <laughs> I wish everybody that's watching the recording could see the live chat. It's just too fun. Okay, so I have a bunch of painted ones. That I just started with white paint. And then let's see here. This one. I'm trying to see. I'm just kind of flipping through and seeing some of the ones that I've actually got something on. <clears throat> So then you can write in them, journal in them, or just collage in them, whatever. Taking layers of napkin apart with tape. Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen to Jean. <laughs> so I guess this kind of explains all this. If, if y'all have any questions, let me put something under to prop that up so it's not a glare. Do y'all have any questions on this segment? Because I did have questions on it, so I just wanted to kind of show you how you can use these magazines, no matter what kind they are. Like I said, it can be a gardening, a cooking, a home and garden, a, a decorating, house decorate, room decorating, architect magazine. Uh, if you, you know, like uh, JJ has fish, it could be a fish magazine, it could be a cat magazine, a dog magazine, it could be any kind of magazine. You know, it could be my watch, a watch magazine. It could be any kind of magazine. <clears throat> whatever you and just like to look at this is my stamp a carved stamp here that's a, uh, that a yeah that's a stamp there with my carved stamp <coughs> in that that's stencil in the background washi tape around the edges let's see what else this one is a stencil a uh, leaf stencil all over that Oh, this was one where somebody said to draw your hand. So I, I stuck my hand. That's actually my hand. I put my hand out like this and drew it. 
<laughs> so anyway, and then you can also doodle around things. You know, you could take even, uh, you know, your, um, what do you call those uh, portfolios? Hang on, let me pull those out. Let's see what drawer they're in. Uh, what drawer are my portfolios? Hang on, I gotta see what drawer they're in. Hmm, where'd I put my portfolios? One moment. They gotta be over here because some of these bigger drawers, I think. Where are my portfolios? Ah, here we go. So all boxes of these old portfolios. You all know these. Get them at Staples. You know these. They're like water soluble waxy crayons. Well, I don't really use them anymore now that I got my Neo Colors. But these are awesome for like if you don't want to just I don't want to say waste your Neo Colors, but these are awesome for uh, working in an art journal like this. That's just kind of like play, where you you know you can do whatever on these and then smear them because they'll blend just like a wax you know like a oil pastel but you could also add water and they'll uh, let me put a little let me just put a little water on there you can blend them with water you know you can blend them with water So these are awesome for just playing in these journals like this. <clears throat> so you can see mine would have been well loved, well used. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bless their art. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I do. I like the portfolios. They're they're awesome. Now this is wet, really wet now that I sprayed it. So let me uh get a Kleenex or something. Kind of because I sprayed it because that was the only water I had handy. <laughs> Let's get the excess off and then I'll dry it real quick. Now the portfolios, as far as I have ever known, the only place I've ever seen them or found, of course you can probably buy them on Amazon, you can buy everything on Amazon, is uh, Staples. And 24 of them are like, what were they, nine, eight, nine dollars when I bought them. You know, you could, and there's, you know, they last forever. <laughs> And they're water soluble. That's why people, and blendable. You know, they're uh, smearable. Like there's a black. I think you can see it better. Look, see how they smear really well? See? Oh, it looks like a little seahorse. <laughs> so, is there any questions on these? journals let's see if I got some more 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 uh, finished looking pages drew a flower on that one drew a bird on that one we put a bird on it you know that's a saying we have if you don't know what to do put a bird on it drew that these were already there in the book, so just add your own drawing to it. Thanks. Hey, Renee. You can see. I like this. This one's like really messy cool. Stencils. Stamps. There's a whole bunch of little butterflies up there I stamped. That's stencil. Then here's the covers. So again, I covered the covers with some scrapbook paper. Here I I, I reinforced it with some, uh, like, you know, the, what kind of tape is that? You know, the, 
um, the tan tape. <laughs> For some reason, the name is escaping me. Oh, let's see. So I did. I did a whole bunch of these one time on a stream. I think we. I did a challenge. I think you know. I, I forget how long the stream was. It three hours. But I try to do as many. I think we did this. We did a whole magazine in three hours. Maybe it wasn't three. Maybe it was longer. But we did. We base coated and started doing some. Uh, this is just with a dip uh, brush. A brush and a, it was either a brush or a, a nib. I can't remember. I think it might have been a nib. And just wrote, you know, some words on them just to play with. But I think we did a, pretty much a whole book. I got a whole bunch of writing on some of these. So I'm going to kind of pass there with some of those. But we did a bunch of... Uh, Masking tape. Thanks, Rain. <laughs> How does somebody forget the masking tape? <laughs> masking tape. Hello, Cable Claire. So I'm just kind of flipping through some of my magazine journals. So this is the only image that I kept, and then all the rest is paint. And then the word, put the, put the word on there ourselves. I say ourselves because if I'm doing a live stream and y'all are here, it's like we did it together. <laughs> oh, some kind of an Alice in Wonderland something. Here's one where we painted out all the background, just left it white. I think it went with another Alice in Wonderland theme thing here. Hey, Miss Allie. So, anyway, guys. Oh, now that's stuck together. That's the ink right there. The ink stuck. I must not let it dry before I closed it. Gotta let these things dry. Some mom. I don't know. Maybe it was Mother's Day the day we did that. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so, anyway. There's a couple more back here that are done. So you can just take and paint out anything you want. And then I think I drew these. Uh, this was a little, some kind of a little barn or something. And I made it into a windmill. Drew all that on there myself. So don't feel like you, you can't change anything. We put a tree over this one. Just drew an ink tree right over the top of that one. So... This girl had a little girl, uh, a girl there with stars around her. So just wrote out the word dreams with the pen. So anyway, guys, that's kind of how it works. You just kind of play with block, you know, like negative space. You negative space it out. <clears throat> And then just play on the page. So there we go. So that is the magazine journal explanation. So I'm going to save that as a separate video because I had a whole bunch of people asking me about it and how it looked and worked. And if you have any questions on that, I'll stop this recording and start another one so that that's kind of like its own video. So... No questions? Okay. Well, everybody here has seen me do those, so it's not like, or pretty much everybody. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to start another recording doing some prompts. And so just give me one second and we will, and if you're watching the recording, thanks for watching. If you all have any questions on the magazine journals, just like leave them in the comments and I'll try to get, answer them for you. Okay, there we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in a Rainy ATL day. 
which might be better for my lighting situation. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do. I think we might just play pull out the prompt jar and draw some things or I don't know. I have my big, uh, you know, scrolls here where we played in these with just prompts. If y'all have been around for these. This is just one of the ones where we just kind of like brainstormed ideas, drew a little bit, played with some ink, um, <clears throat> played with some uh, stamping with the foam, made our own stamp with the fun, not fun foam, but those foam blocks. Let's see what else. One of the prompts was draw a selfie, uh, drew some little ladybugs. This was one of Jean's lists that we started. I blame Jean for all that. I blame Jean for everything. <laughs> uh, these were some little quick little, I think I did these with thumb prints and then made little faces out of them. We did some wax crayon, so you're seeing that. So this is melted crayon. And just some little, drew a little folded paper. So this is just a little bit of everything in here. And so either coordinate or match the colors in the images and what that does is it gives you a full cohesive page to journal on or even work on more collage or whatever else you want to do further but it gives you it, it makes you start to think about color combinations and color trying to match the colors that are in the images just to kind of color play basically that's what i i like these for and i i haven't worked in them in uh, for quite a while probably at least a year because i've just been doing other you know other art projects but i have had a request for showing these a little bit and explaining them now because every page will end up being painted i did pull something out here or maybe just came loose Every page is pretty much painted. So when you do that, oh, I see what it is. I had this torn out for something and then I taped it back in. I don't know. Bob, don't ask why I deconstructed this one. But what I wanted to say is if you work in one of these where you're painting every single page, you need to work some in the front, some in the back, some in the front, some in the back, so that your spine does not warp. This one, I really kind of just went front to back, and you can see what happens to the spine. It will warp like that, and you really never can get it back, no matter how much you smash it down and put books on top of it. It's really not ever going to get back. Not that that matters to me so much, because it's just a play-in. But if, if that kind of thing bothers you, you need to do some paint in the front and some in the back, so that it kind of gets wet at the same rate front and back and then you won't get that warped spine this one it did it a little bit on this one you can see there but if you don't want that again now this one is just kind of pretty new this one has three magazines in it so this one will end up probably being about that thick in the end because they puff up the pages are going to puff up and so those three magazines will probably double and so it'll be real puffy, which I, I like that. I don't mind that. But if you don't want the spine to warp, work some in the front, some in the back. Some Now, you know, that's just to paint the pages. If you've got your pages painted and then you want to actually use it for a journal or sketching in or something like that, it doesn't matter about, you know, you can start from the front and work your way to the back. But the initial painting of the pages, you really need to go front, back, front, back for them not to that to happen. So just want to explain that real quick. So, so and I glued two together, the the back the the back cover of one to the front cover of the other, and I've done that with multiple magazine things. So this is a pretty new one here, and and that's all it is. It's two magazines of your like if you like to if you're a gardener you might pick two gardening magazines, flower magazines, fashion magazines, although. The fashion magazines are very, very thin. Um, you can still do this, but it's gonna, it's your pages will probably really wrinkle because it is very thin. It's the other magazines that have, and they're not like it's not like extra quality paper or anything, but it's better than just the fashion magazines, which usually tend to have the cheapest, thinnest uh, pages, which is great if you're doing collage. You know, those thin pages are great to collage. 
but um, what, what I'm gonna, I'm doing with these is like painting and and you know you can even journal in them if you want with like a big pen over the acrylic paint. So what it is, you just glue two together of any kind of choice of magazine as you like. And what you do is, let me find a good sample one, is you paint around, maybe this one, you paint around the images that are on there with colors that, you, this one's getting pretty full, so I have another half roll here. So if we do some prompts, I'll just start that one. Uh, but I've had some questions on the magazine journal, so hopefully the lighting is okay. It's okay, I guess. Uh, on the magazine journals that I talked about the other day, if y'all have any questions, put them in yeah, bam, prompts, prompts, prompts. If y'all have any questions, put them in caps so that um, I can catch those. <clears throat> But anyway, so these were some of the magazine journals. I just pulled three of them here. This is the one I sort of showed a little bit the other day. And all it is, so let me just kind of explain. You, you can get, it, it doesn't have to be two magazines. I've glued two together. And you can see, I'll tell you the trick about not having this happen. Um, but you can glue two magazines together. I like the Somerset uh, or the, the Somerset Studio Publication people. Stampington. They have like 20 different magazines. You know, they have stamping ones, art journaling, Somerset Studio, bloggers, home and home ones, and handbags, and they had like all kinds. And so I just have two, I picked two that I had had around and that I didn't need or want anymore. 